Christmas is fast approaching, and these dropped through the letterbox recently. They were sent by Steve Henriksen from Sweden, and he saw these in a shop, and he was quite intrigued by the fact it said timer on off. So he bought a couple of sets, and when he got home, he liked them so much that he promptly went and bought every other set in the shop, which is reasonable enough behaviour. And this uh, unit is its very standard style of effect these days. It has the three click options. It's got the first click activates a timer mode and the LEDs light up. Not super bright, but then that's going to result in good long battery life. Still amply bright enough. Uh, the first click uh, starts a six hour timer and it'll be six hours on, 18 hours off, and then that will repeat. So every 24 hours they'll light up exactly the same time at night and run for six hours. It's a, just a very simple sort of dusk sensor effect, but it's not actually a dusk sensor, it's purely a timer based, which means it doesn't rely on uh, needing light sensors. If you click it again, it just goes into static on and it'll stay lit until they're turned off and the third click turns it off. And this is a, a really common arrangement now. It crept in a couple of products uh, a few years ago and then it's gradually evolved. There are a lot of controllers that have this functionality. I like this case. It is properly waterproof, the look of it. It's got the rubber seal and the sort of slight lip that goes into that seal. And when you press it shut uh, and put these catches over, it does seem to catch it quite tightly. That it's sort of like the sort of tupperware -ish type container with the clips. And likewise, the tactile button here is a fairly standard looking tactile button. It just protrudes into the rubber grommet type button to actuate that. So it's quite a nice arrangement. And the LEDs themselves are a nice golden warm white. It's attractive. So let's open this up and take a look inside. Um, are we going to guess that it's probably based on the ubiquitous little 8-pin chip and not much else? Now, I did try designing a bit of software, writing a bit of software for a PIC-12 microcontroller and I was hoping to use its internal oscillator and I discovered that the internal oscillator is just not stable enough. As the voltage goes down, the frequency drifted too much. So these things tend to use a quartz crystal and they tend to use the standard timing quartz crystal uh, of 32.768 kilohertz, which is commonly used in uh, watches and clocks and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm seeing the 8-pin chip already. I'm seeing the resistor for the LEDs. Uh, can I get that board out a wee bit more? Have I got a pair of luminous pliers here? I have. Let's try and get this out just a little bit more, although I should undo those screws first. Now, has this been heat staked in? If it has, I may stop because I can probably guess what's on the other side of the circuit board, namely not much. But let's uh, get this out anyway if we can, without damaging it. I may damage it, I can always fix it. It is coming out. Oh, that is glued. That's a bit annoying. It's hot melt glued in, but we can maybe release that. Ooh, maybe stab myself in the process. Oh, that's kind of working. Yeah, that should do it. That is also the waterproofing gone down there now, but that's okay. And this, if I prise this up, it should have a wire running down to the other end, which is actually trapped under that battery contact. So there's a couple of approaches they could use here for the timer. They could use a microcontroller, which for small runs would be quite cost effective. Let's see if we can get this out without causing too much damage. It's, there's nothing much in the back. There's the quartz crystal. Let's uh, zoom up in this and take a look at the circuitry. So there's the quartz crystal in the back, which is almost certainly 32.768 kilohertz. Um, for a very obvious reason, which I shall explain in a moment, uh, the chip has nothing printed on it at all. It's completely blank. There's a surprise. Let's uh, check out the, you know, this is a microcontroller, I can tell already, because it's using the classic pin 1 and 8 uh, for the power with a little capacitor across it. The button is going into pin 5. Uh, the crystal is across. Oh, this is this. This is almost. This is the same layer as a PIC 12. That it's got the crystal. I'm pretty sure that pins two and three are used for the crystal oscillator. 
And then the output is coming from some random other pin. I can't actually see which one it's connected to here. What is odd is that I can see that pin... Oh, I wonder, um, I'm actually looking at this and thinking, is this what I'm thinking it is? Yes, it is. I was just uh, seeing a slight reflection there. But the two pins here, pin 7 and 8, look as though they might be common. I'm not sure why that would be. Um, anyway, the output comes from the microcontroller, and it goes via a resistor here to the transistor and turns the transistor on. The transistor pulls the LEDs to the negative rail, most likely. Um, the that's the positive is coming in to here positive yet yeah, the positive is feeding via a resistor in this case it's a 121 one, 120 ohm resistor which is that is going to give a good um, long battery life that is really a lot of these just use a 10 ohm resistor that just go for maximum intensity but the 120 ohm resistor 1 2 and 1 0 uh, will give a very good battery life in this. Another leg is just pulled down by the uh, transistor. But I was pondering, you see, other versions of this use a little chip on board type blob. And it made me realize that while it's quite handy using a microcontroller for mass, for well, small uh, batteries, you could use logic to do a sort of a much more have I, have I stayed in shot for that? Have I been staying in shot? I'm hoping I've been staying in shot. I shall find out afterwards. Uh, but while the microcontroller is fine for small batches, if you're going to use a large quantity, it's sometimes better to implement it just as a counter because this is a very standard sort of product these days. And I was working out how you'd do that. And my first theory was that you could uh, use the inverter with the standard arrangement of a crystal, I'm thinking this is the standard arrangement of a crystal, correct me if I'm wrong, and then a buffer, um, and that could then drive a binary counter. Now, the 32,768 hertz, if I bring in the big calculator, and we just do a bit of maths here, so 32,768 hertz divided by 2 equals... 60,384, 8,192, 4,096, 2,048, 1,024, 5,512, 256. It's just basically, it's a standard binary multiple, and it goes all the way down to 1 hertz. That's why they use 32.768 kilohertz. It's the maximum frequency that they can get stability from a quartz crystal, uh, but it divides down nicely, and... These crystals are used in things like quartz clocks. They're also used to generate the sort of the alarm sounds, the pips, by dividing the uh, output of that crystal down to an audio tone and then gating it using other uh, logic bits. Now, that means that that equates to approximately uh, 15 binary bits. So that's the point you'd get one hertz out. But what we're actually looking for here is... Um, a six hour time delay. And if you consider that the six hours is also a binary thing because six hours in 24 is one in four. Because the six, uh, a six hour timer, if you step it through four steps and it's only on for one of them, that is the six hours on and the 18 hours off. So let me think now. Um, if I wanted to divide that down to six hours, so let's bring the calculator in again. Let's reset the calculator and say 60 seconds per minute times 60. So that's, uh, and times, that's per hour, uh, times 6 equals, so now we've got a count of 21,600. Divide that number of seconds into 6 hours. And this could be divided um, into... A binary, so we could actually continue that on that 15 step binary counter and we could divide it down further. So if we were to actually um, divide this down, let's see, divided by 2 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And at this point, I can't go further because if I do, it will uh, go to uh, 
a non-round figure. It will go to a decimal point and then 0.5, which isn't really dividable by binary as such. So let's uh, backtrack on that to 675. So I can add another five stages onto this. Five stages of binary counter. And then I want to divide down by 675. And I think that could be done with a gated counter. If you had uh, a binary counter that was going 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, then the 675, the first uh, of these binary multiples that's going to fit into that is 512, so that's 1. So let's deduct the 512 from this, minus 512. Now we've got 163, that's not going to fit in the 256, that's a zero. We can deduct 128 from that, so minus 128, oop, minus, oh god, no, I fucked that up, oops, excuse me, <laughs> 512 minus uh, 250, uh, oh, where was I? I'm going to have to start this again. I really have screwed up. This happens quite a lot. 60 times 60 times 6 equals, divided by 2, equals 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's uh, make a note of the figure this time, right? 675 counts. Okay. 675 minus the 512 minus the 128. Um, the next one is going to be, we can deduct 32 from that, minus 32... And that just leaves three, so that would be those two. So that's the binary number that would give that division of 675. Let me know if this is boring. Some people find it boring, some people find it kind of intriguing. So I was thinking then, supposing you had a AND gate, and the AND gate was connected to those, and this is just theory, I've not tried this, but it was connected to all those particular bits, so that when all of them went high together, and the only point they would all go high, is when this one was reached and then the others reached that particular number. Pretty sure that would work. But that means that output would go high once every 675 pulses. So if this was the counter that was uh, after this pre-division of 20 binary steps, then the gated output could be used to not only, let's uh, just draw that as a block like that, uh, could not only be used to reset all these counters, reset, reset, and reset, but it could also clock another binary counter, but uh, just a, a two-bit binary counter. So let's say uh, I clock a two-bit binary counter over here, and... It's going to have uh, four possible permutations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So I'm thinking that the, initially when you power this up, you want that to be reset. So it's going to be at 0, 0. Um, and that's the point you want the LEDs to come on. So I would say then that if you were to put a diode from each of those two binary data lines, Calm them together, diode steering logic. Um, and then you were to use that them to drive a transistor. I'm going to run out of space here. So let's uh, be really cramped here. And then there's another transistor with its base being pulled up high to plus volts. Um, and that was then pulled down low by that transistor, basically just inverting it. Uh, then that one could drive the LEDs. I really did run out of space here. That wasn't very clever. But those of you following will get the gist. And that means that the only point though the, the LEDs could light up is when this transistor was off and that one was allowed to turn on, which would be the initial power-up state. But as soon as that was any other number, like one, uh, either bit was one or both were one, then current would flow through those diodes. It would turn on this transistor and it would turn that off. So that strikes me as being... The implementation. The only other thing here you'd have is the uh, on, off, and timer function, which uh, would be harder to implement. This it wouldn't be that hard. It'd be another. Ultimately, it'd be another binary counter. I'm guessing. Um, 
or just a toggle switch that switched between or the output of this. I mean, that's how the other ones work. They usually have the toggle switch that switches between the uh, this uh, output from the chip or it will just drive the uh, LEDs on directly. So you can click it either from off to timed on one side or to the uh, just solid on the other side, which just basically takes the LEDs direct to the supply via the resistor. So that is how I think you'd impl implement that. I mean, you're welcome to correct me if you think I'm wrong, or you might even come up with an alternative idea for that. But in this case, uh, it looks like they have used a microcontroller because that makes sense and uh, it allows them just to add that button functionality very simply. And these days, I suppose a microcontroller is such a cheap option just getting them bulk programmed to specific tasks. But this is quite a nice little set of lights. I li particularly like the fact it doesn't try to drive the LEDs too brightly. It just runs them at a sensible level to maximise the battery life. And there's a very good chance that with a good set of nickel metal hydride cells or a fresh set of alkaline, that this would run for pretty much the whole Christmas season, just lighting for six hours um, a day, just gradually reducing intensity over the season. But yeah, that's quite neat. I like the implementation of this. It's quite a smart case as well. And this was quite fun to work out as a puzzle. So yeah, interesting stuff.